What is happening guys? You're here with Nate This is Crossbeats Production and thank you once again for tuning in. Been a while since I've done a plugin review and I want to step out and do one of these for the TG Mastering Chain by Abbey Rhodes in conjunction with Waves. Um, I want to give you my honest opinion and thoughts on this plugin, what I think it's useful for and what it could be used for um, and what I might use it for if I intend to buy it and also just give you um, a rundown of how it works. So let's go through that and if you want to get to the audio example, go down to the comments section below. You'll see a timestamp which allows you to get to that straight away. Um, otherwise let's go through some of the functions and all of the good stuff with this plugin. So um, in my opinion as far as Waves plugins are concerned I, just, I think they try to emulate a lot of the old analog gear and that's kind of their what they've been doing for a while that's their kind of thing. Um, they do have a lot of plugins that are good for modern stuff as well so modern music but in this instance I think they're trying to reach the middle ground and go for the old 70s music slash the new genre music and just adding it for tonal shaping and all that sort of stuff for a plugin. So let's go through the functions that you see on the screen and kind of run through it by step to step. Um, first part of it is the five module plugin that you can see here. So that comes in as one plugin and then you've got the additional section here which is the metering part of it which is just metering and a few other bits and pieces on that. Um, these are two separate plugins that you load in individually and they bring you both this what you can see on the screen here. The input part of it here. So the input section is as you'd expect input metering. Um, all of these can be adjusted to except for the first one here. So this one and the last one, these are stuck in place, uh, input and output there as you can see there. But the ones in the middle, so the three modules here can be moved around as you can see that's happening right now. Um, I personally think because this, well in my opinion this isn't a be all and end all mastering plugin, it's most definitely not like an ozone or something like that. Um, it is definitely more of a tonal shape of your mix and it can be used as an you know, EQ or a compressor or whatever you want to use it for in a you know, mixing setting or a mastering setting. Um, the plugin comes in with the input dial here, so if I just play the track in a moment, which I'll do, I'll show you what I'm talking about. The input can be very useful for adjusting the actual input of the track, um, which you can see here, this track's already quite loud. I have semi already mixed it slash mastered it previously, and it already has a peak cutoff limiter on this mix. So that's another thing I want to talk about with this, this compression section here slash limiter mode on that, but we'll get to that in a second. So we've got this section here, you can actually hit this uh, each module on and off. This section here allows you to go into all of the uh, modules individually. So that's one function that you can do with that. Um, you've got stereo, duo or mid side. So I'm not going to go too much in depth with what that is. But first, you know, if you don't know what mid side is, it's basically the mono channel in the center versus the left and right, which is usually reverb and all that stuff included on the sides. Um, you've got transpose and you've got polyphony so you can obviously adjust the polyphony so that's the way that the phase is going to sit. You can adjust the phase to 90 degrees so plus 90 or plus 90 left and right. Um, you've got the balance here so you can go to the balance left or right as you can see there. Um, and polyphony obviously allows you to adjust all of that so you can hear where phase issues are sitting inside your master or your mix or whatever the application is that you're using this plugin for. Um, tape equalizer is pretty much just an EQ for the specific tape that would have been around at this time when they put it on. So a lot of the stuff was happening on tape back when this was around. Well, I should say it's still around, but back when this was being used a lot, this was pretty much using tape as the main output source for the actual master in the end. And there was a lot of tape just constantly being used for recording and all that sort of stuff. So it makes sense they include tape on this. So they've got a 15 IPS and a 7.5 um, and then you can adjust it as per taste as you would like. Um, this part, the mid-side section, obviously it wasn't around. Uh, this is included on the Waves plugin, uh, just for useful uh, tips on that. The other part here then is the tonal section. So you've got this, which is basically an EQ at set band frequencies. So you've got all these frequencies that you can adjust. Uh, they're all set frequencies, which obviously this design this was designed to go in the frequencies where most of the stuff that you would want to adjust is and majority of the you know for example the 256 or 181 um, a lot of the low sort of punch and stuff like that would sit with the kicks and stuff like that so um, you can adjust that on the set band frequencies here 
The next part on this part is the filter section. So you've got the low uh, BL, which is a different filter shape. Um, it's just pretty much shelving uh, different filtering types there. So that allows you to adjust that so you can just mess around with how it sounds. Um, the gain, obviously all of these gain dials in the middle allow you to adjust up and down plus 10 either side. Uh, so you can do that just by taste, whatever sounds good to you. And you can isolate each one so that you can listen to what it's doing to the mix or the master as you go. Uh, mid side also included on that and duo as well as stereo. Um, this part here, which obviously if I just go back out, um, this is just going in order of what's happening here. So uh, this is the, I guess you could call it limiter part of it, but I wouldn't classify it so much as a limiter other than the fact that you've got a 100 to one ratio. Um, which is quite a high ratio for a compressor. But, you know, a lot of compressors are able to do that kind of uh, ratio nowadays anyway, but this is just the way that they've included it because it's kind of going back to the antique of this actual hardware. Um, they added some functions here. So you've got the original, which is the original, I guess, compressor slash uh, limiter, and then they've got the limit function here, and then they've thrown in the modern part, which is another, I guess, Waves rendition of what they wanted for modern music so that they're not stuck with just the 70s music <laughs> on this plugin. Um, so then this part here is the recovery, so that allows you to recover what's happening with the compressor. So this is all set um, on recovery, so you've got one to six. Very similar to the Fairchild, uh, that had one to six and also allows you to just set the recoveries. I think, I don't know 100%, but I'm pretty sure some of these are auto recover, so maybe six or five is. I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's how that actual hardware was. Um, the function here, which is makeup gain, it's pretty obvious, it speaks for itself. You're just making up the gain that you lost. And you've got the mix function down here, which allows you to adjust parallel compression or, you know, looking at how much percentage of compression is going into your mix versus not. So I think the way that they've set this at 50 is probably a good thing in the sense of trying to mix parallel versus uh, the uncompressed signal. I usually like to start at about 30 or so, or maybe even 40, up to about 50, um, or even 80%. It really depends on what you're working on and where you want the compressor to sit. But you know, sometimes people forget to use parallel compression in their mastering chain because it's very useful in that aspect. So I think they've just put it at 50 because that's kind of where they thought it would tastefully sound good. Um, the next part then is on the side here. So this is the filtering section for the actual compressor. So it's like a side chain filter, which you can adjust. Um, we'll just go into that as well. This, I'll just get to that link in a second, but you can actually put the high pass on here. So this allows this to be activated then. Um, you can adjust how much you want in the side chain of this. So that allows frequencies to bypass the compressor or be included in the compressor. Uh, very useful if you're using it for high frequencies versus low. Uh, you don't want to always include the low end frequencies inside the compression uh, because it creates pumping and all of that stuff that happens with compression uh, with you with having the lower, more powerful frequencies in that compressor there. Uh, mixing, obviously, you can use it however you want tastefully. It's up to you what, what you decide to do, uh, but very useful that they've included mid side and duo uh, which is dual mono so basically that's allowing left and right channels to be separate independent uh, stereo is inclusive and then you can link the stereo as well so that's linking the channels left and right together uh, so uh, the filter part of it which i'll just go back here because i actually think that's at the start here so it's not in order of how this is working but anyway um, so we'll just go through that this is that part here which you saw which i just first showed you um, this is high pass and low pass so you can obviously include or exclude what you want uh, and then you've got a presence dial here which allows majority of the presence frequencies to be uh, adjusted and then the additional amount or the minusing amount so plus by 10 or minus by 10. So um, next to this is then the or I should say below is the metering plot part of this plugin. Uh, this is probably one of the more useful meters that I've found on a plugin as far as, you know, waves as far as their metering and stuff like that. Um, and it's good they included it obviously in this plugin as well. Um, so they've got the phase part here, which is plus or minus uh, phase correlation. 
that allows you to see what's happening with your phase throughout the mixing or the mastering part of it. And then you've got peak hold or normal, so that just shows you whether or not you're holding the frequencies at the top there, and then it'll indicate on the red light here if you've bypassed the, uh, I guess, minus or zero dB threshold, so that's your peak. Um, and then obviously the old VU meters, which allow you to see in the old fashioned style VU metering. And finally, then you've got mix and bridge. So meter bridge, this is the input. And then you can change that to main and you can put that on a gain reduction. So that allows you to see what's happening with the actual compressor here. So uh, how does this, <laughs> wow, how does this actually sound? Finally, we'll just get to this part here, which is a spreader, because I think this is one of the better spreaders that you can get on a plug-in as far as for the price. Um, it allows you to adjust the stereo you know, field so it's out wide or in narrow, uh, and then you can do that mono just to listen to it, or stereo and then left and right, all that good stuff, So, uh, or stereo and mono. So that's a really key uh, part here. I like that they can actually, allow, well, I like they allowed that and included it there. Uh, and then you've got the spreader so you can adjust that. Uh, linking left and right, so that's pretty much straightforward. Don't need to explain that too much. What does it sound like? Let's get to the audio example and get into that. So let me press play, just mess around with some of these um, and see what it sounds like and go from there.
right. So I just did a quick master with this plugin. It's not obviously, like I said, the be all and end all of mastering, but it definitely opened up my track. I felt like it put things in the mix where it sounded like a wider track. Um, things kind of sat differently in the mix. Definitely helped me get rid of some of the muddiness in the mix as well. And um, kind of just worked as I was going through it of what it sounded like to me. So if you like what it does, obviously um, you guys can check this out, go test it out on your own mix, see what you think, see how it can work for you, um, and just check it out in general. So anyway, this is my honest opinion. I think it might be worth buying it. It's not the be-all and end-all of a mastering suite at all, um, but it's definitely good for tonal shaping and getting your mix to kind of give it character and stuff like that. So if you like this, hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace out.